Welcome to Southern Salon Podcast. I'm Amy Clark Spain. And I'm Brittany Robertson. And we're glad you're with us. So Brittany, Happy New Year. How was your Christmas? Well, first of all, I feel like it's been eons since we've done this. So I have missed this so much just being able to chat and hang out with you, Amy. Christmas was great. It was very low key and slow paced, which is probably a good thing. And then here we are. 2020 behind us, starting a new year. How about you, Amy? It was wonderful. We talked about this yesterday. It, it was wonderful mainly because, and ours was low-key too, but mainly because we got snow. That was like the most magical, amazing thing to have snow because the last time I remember having snow, Riley was a baby. So that would have been 10 years ago. Like on Christmas morning, it snowed. That was the last time I remembered it snowing on Christmas morning. I think you're right. We were um, we were trying to determine that, and I didn't know. I thought we woke up to to snow on on Christmas morning ten years ago. I didn't remember it actually snowing. So this was her first white Christmas that she can remember, obviously. Right on Christmas, yes. Like I said, it was just magical and like you know low key. We were missing some family because they had to quarantine, and that was sad, but. We got over it. I mean, we're very traditional family like your family is, and and we have a hard time not doing the same thing that we always do, Mm -hmm. you know, but this, we just have to make adjustments and modify, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just the way that it is. But snow, the snow was like a gift. It really was. I think to sort of make up for everything. So I, I have to say this is one of the best Christmases that, that I can remember. Amy and I were, t- were chatting yesterday about that very same thing. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I cried looking out the window on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And I know to some people, a white Christmas is probably something that they, it happens so often that they don't think about it. But in the South to get a white Christmas when I feel like we've been getting less and less snow throughout the years was just like unwrapping the biggest adult size Christmas present. (laughs) It was Mm -hmm. so, I agree. It was so, so good. We've been so fortunate this past year through everything that's gone on. It's been difficult, but it's been small scale difficult, you know, compared to what so many folks were facing. But I think for everybody in this area, I was thinking about a family of ours that, our neighbors really they lost their house on Christmas Eve it burnt down Christmas oh, Eve no. when they woke up in the morning the house was um, it was gone and I just thought about them on Christmas morning waking up to seeing like snow it was just beautiful you know it was just beautiful it was it was icing on a really bad cake <laughs> It was just putting the sweet stuff right on top. So, like you said, we're in a new year, and my husband and I were talking about this. He he gets annoyed with the resolution, the the whole word resolution, because you know research shows when people set resolutions by mid February they've abandoned most of them. So I don't know if you avoid that word. I, I set goals. I mean, I think it's a good time to set goals and reflect back on what we were talking about this yesterday, what we managed to accomplish despite the obstacles of of 2020. And you always do a year in review on your Instagram page. And I did that last year. I just didn't get around to doing it this year. But what are some of the things when you look back on 2020 that are the positives you're really proud of? I think like so many other people out there, really all of us, we were at home more. And being at home more really kind of forced us to slow down. And I don't really think of us as a busy body family until we were in this pandemic and realized three little kids and you know, two working parents, life, whether we realize it or not, really does move very fast. And so I found myself initially kind of bummed out that we were, we were all stuck at home for so long, but then really started to see some beauty in it. And and we took time to do things that we've been putting off for years. And we really, I know I kind of laughed at myself. I said I was the next Carolyn Ingalls, but I, you know, I really took a little more pride in doing things around the house as far as like getting my garden back in gear and doing more canning and preserving and those things I'm, I'm really excited about. Another thing really for me professionally is this has kind of been a year of growth for me. Amy and I have both been teaching from home 
And, you know, it's crazy. (laughs) I thought I would get less done. In some ways I did, but in some ways I got more done. I I felt like I was able to kind of double down and and kind of focus professionally, both on my teaching side of things and on my blogging. So, you know, I've had a lot of time to really research and and kind of dig in and, and look at ways to grow. So that's been a positive. What about you, Amy? You know, I was talking to you yesterday about having a vision board and it sounds kind of cliche, but I created this vision board on Pinterest. I was like, what do I want to do? This was last January, you know, and again, planning for the year and thinking about, and this is before we knew that a pandemic was going to hit, obviously. But one of the things that I had always wanted to do was start a podcast and you and I started talking about it and we started that in February. And I see that as one of the big highlights of the year is that we started it and we're still going with it. And it seems to have gotten a lot of attention and, and we've got some great listeners. And, and it's just been a great experience. It's therapeutic. We talk about that all the time, about how therapeutic it is to have these conversations. And I hope it's the same for people to listen to. We started this little shop called Ivy Attic Company on Etsy, and we make handmade jewelry. We have a river glass collection from glass that we find along the riverbanks. And we make from old books, vintage books and dictionaries. We make word jewelry. We do a lot of stuff with resin. And and so that's just been a tremendous experience for both of us because she's learning how to become a, a business person, but also she's feeling the thrill of having her art being bought and, and knowing that other people are wearing it. And so that, that's been, I think, one of the biggest highlights of the year for us. Well, Amy's not going to brag on herself because that's the kind of person she is, but I'm going to do that because... You know, I I did not mention the podcast because honestly, Amy, I feel like we've been doing this forever and in a good way. I totally forgot that we started this last year. I guess Mm -hmm. our one year anniversary is coming up in what, February? It is. So Amy and I had kind of sat down last year and she was talking about doing the podcast. And then she was kind of talking about toying around with the idea of an Etsy shop. And we had um, a good friend of mine, Candace Mead, who joined us on a podcast. And she is a phenomenal businesswoman on Etsy. She's got one of the top rated shops on there making dog collars. And she's just done a tremendous job. And I remember, I guess we had her on over the summer, didn't we, Amy? We did. Yes. So we had her on. And then I I know Amy and I were talking about it afterwards. And, you know, she was talking about wanting to do this and it just seemed really daunting. And oh my goodness, it just seemed like a lot. She didn't know if they could do it. And then they've had a pretty incredible year for a small shop launching on Etsy during the middle of a pandemic. I'm blown away. I'm not only by the quality of the thing, that she's made, but just the success of her business. I know I talked to Amy before Christmas and she was, her head was kind of going in a million different directions, trying to make sure everybody got their Christmas gifts and making everything special. And that's one of the things that I appreciated about it so much is that, you know, you hear people say things are made with love, but you can tell that what Amy and Riley do are made with love. So it's been fun for me to watch, to watch that blossom because I think, I think it took off a little faster and further than maybe Amy and Riley anticipated, which is a good thing. Looking back, I'm sure they can say it's a good thing now. But yeah, I I think, you know, to be able to walk away with any kind of growth after last year is a win, whether it's professionally, spiritually, personally, you know, in your marriage, in your relationships. Like if you can walk away saying that you've experienced growth during a year like we had, then, you know, that's a tremendous win in my opinion. I agree. And that's such a great point because when you were talking about that, And thank you for everything you said, by the way. When you were talking about that, I was thinking about how green we were. We knew nothing about podcasting. Nothing. Not the first thing. Nothing about how to do it, what equipment we needed. We really knew nothing. And we had to do, you know, quick training to be able to get it up and off the ground as quick. Because you and I are both very impatient people. Is Would you agree? Like once we have an idea, we want to hit the ground running. I don't even know if impatience the word because that's, that's too <laughs> that's too mild of a word to describe what we, we both are. But yes, yes. I don't like to take the time to read directions or to watch tutorial. Like just, just show me how to do it. Like I just want to do it immediately. And that's kind of how we were with the podcast. And I think by the grace of God, we... <laughs> We're able to get it started, but we also had a lot of help from some of our colleagues at UVA Wise, which I'm so grateful for. A lot of help. You know, I, th- I think about what we've both learned in the past year because we were willing to learn. And I think 
facing that challenge, you know, we could have said, no, it's too much time. Gosh, we've got so much going on in our lives already. It's too much time. It's too much effort. Let's don't do it, you know, and, and give up. But we didn't, you know, and I'm proud of us. And the same thing with with this little shop with Riley, it did seem a little daunting at first. You know, we stuck with it and and it kind of just appeared. And I, I really believe, you know, my faith tells me that God is in the works when things happen. I'm not going to say it was easy, but we didn't we didn't face anything insurmountable. I mean, we it just it just came together. I'm talking about the podcast and I'm talking about other things that that we were able to accomplish. And I have to say, Brittany, that you have inspired me. And you really inspired my perseverance too, because, you know, I've watched you grow your Instagram account and grow your brand and, and your business over the past year and a half. And it's just been amazing to watch. And I see all the good that you do. It's not just about profit. It's not even about profit. I mean, you share your life, you share your family, you give back. Your message is so inspirational. And and I know this because, you know, I have actually met people who don't know that you and I are friends and don't know that you and I are coworkers and your name has come up as a blogger that they watch and listen to and read. And and I'm always thrilled to be able to say, oh, I know her, you know, but it's it's been inspiring to watch. And I think that's one of the things that motivated me to go ahead and move forward. And you've been so great to give advice to me and you know, we talked yesterday about what we wanted to do with this particular podcast. We have friends who have their own businesses and we have friends who are starting up projects. And what keeps you motivated? You know, you have a following on Instagram of about 25,000 people now, right? Is that is that correct? Uh, give or take. Depends on, depends on what yeah. day it is. And I know you're not going to brag on yourself either. So I'm just <laughs> going to say, you know, that's no small thing. And I know you hate the word influencer, but... I think in your case, being an influencer is a, is a great thing because your influence is so positive. Looking back on the growth that you experienced in 2020, how did you do it? First of all, again, thank you for all those really nice things. I, I don't see myself in that way. Maybe that's probably not a good thing. You know, I <laughs> I look at what I'm doing here. It was never, a, you know, it was never anything that I really intended on doing. And, and it's kind of all these little pieces just have popped up and started fitting together. I'm still very far from where I want to be. I don't even know where I want to be with it, honestly. I've just kind of threw it out there. At the college that Amy and I work at, I teach communications courses, obviously, and I dabble. And some of those courses, I, I go into the social media aspect of things and kind of teach social media uh, marketing and things like that. And so what really kind of started out as a way for me to play and just kind of ploy some of the things that I was researching and then also trying things and seeing how I could teach those, you know, things. I feel like I'm a better teacher if I'm experiencing it. So kind of jumping in from that side and then it just kind of, you know, slowly began taking off. And I will say this, everybody has a different journey and a different experience. In my personal opinion, unless you got in it back before the boom happened, which has been within the last couple of years, growth is slow. It's very painfully slow if you're doing it, in my opinion, in one of the right ways, unless you're just a really <laughs> different case. But it's slow um, to build an authentic, engaged audience because you want people that are following you that really want to be following you. That doesn't happen overnight. Growth is is slow if you're doing it in the right way, I think. And, and, you know, there's a lot of ways you can get to the top really fast, but that requires spending enormous amounts of time that I just, I, I will not devote to this because it's very easy to get addicted to this and to fall in the trap of thinking you have to be on here and you have to do more, 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 more. So I would definitely think in terms of of growth. I actually grew slower last year than I did the year before. And that's okay. Like I'm, I'm at a point professionally in my career where I'm okay with that. You know, I look around at my kids, they're definitely not getting any, you know, they're, they're definitely not getting younger. They're growing up so fast. And, you know, I don't want their memories of me to be with my face and my phone. So, you know, I'm taking the growth as I can get it. And it, it is what it is for me in that way. And, and that's probably the wrong outlook for for someone who is trying to make a career or make a job out of out of social media it's it's a time suck and it can it can really eat you up if you if you let it yes and speaking as your colleague too i you know i think it's such a bonus 
for us at the college and in the department that you have had this kind of success on social media and that you are actually practicing what you teach and that you actually are having success at what you're teaching. Because I think a lot of people think that we just we just profess, but we don't do, right? <laughs> and you are actually showing your student. I mean, it's such it's such a great model for your students to follow because this is the world that they are graduating into. This is, you know, the digital world's not going away. And so I think that, right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not going away. And I will say this, you know, there, there is definitely one of the things that's also kind of been born out of this is, you know, that I've been able to kind of pick up some consulting work and and have a couple of clients that I, you know, work with them on social media and kind of help them run their business on social media. I think it's a great tool for anyone to have really to be able to to market themselves or their business on social media because it's not going away. It's, you know, for the majority of the, you know, it's free. (laughs) Um, So being able to utilize a free resource to promote yourself and your products, that's where your audience is now. So, um, you know, it's and it's ever changing. And I think that's something that I like about it, too. It's frustrating, but I also like that it's changing. It's not something that you can read a book and then, you know, stay on that same path. It's, yeah. it's ever changing. And it's important to kind of keep up with that. And, you know, I say this, like, I'll, I will learn and spend a lot of time, like understanding algorithms and best practices. And then the algorithm will change and everything that I did prior will go out the window. I'll give you a prime example of this. Last fall, uh, so I share a lot of different things on my Instagram, but one of the things I do share is kind of like affordable style, just outfits and ideas of things, how to how to wear things, super unimportant stuff. But I had shared some things from Walmart last fall, because if you're not familiar with our region, we don't have a lot of shopping options as far as being able to go in store and shop. And Walmart had some really cute things. So I went into the store and started sharing a few things from there and shared a lot of try-ons. And um, I experienced really tremendous growth from that. A lot of people obviously were interested in Walmart last year and would, sh- you know, gain, you know, maybe hundreds of followers each time that I would put up a, you know, a Walmart post and use certain hashtags. Literally, as the calendar struck January 1st of last year, it stopped. Like, Walmart, sharing Walmart, I would lose followers. I mean, it was just, it was the most bizarre thing. And it was just like the algorithm had changed. And, you know, I know people's interest didn't change that fast. So, and that's why I say I can't spend a whole lot of time thinking about it and and even doing it because at the end of the day, I, I tell myself, why am I here? You know, I'm here to motivate, to encourage, to inspire, to make people happy, to make them laugh, to make them, to make their day better or brighter. I'm not here to get people to like the things that I put up. I mean, if I, if I did that consistently, I'd drive myself crazy. I'd be working for likes, which in some ways that's sadly enough, kind of what that, that influencer life can be at times, but I'm learning to let that go and to really focus on, you know, the legacy that I'm leaving behind online. My kids are getting older. One day they're going to see the things that I'm putting up there. And I, I want it to be authentic me, whether people are loving the content or not. It's, it's, it needs to be me. I think I should also pause here and tell you, Amy can edit our podcast beautifully so you don't hear any of the background noise, but let it be known here. I'm going to state this out loud that we've had to stop our podcast at least four or five times for children needing to use the bathroom, (laughs) children who are virtual learning, having internet dogs falling down the stairs, dogs falling down the stairs. (laughs) So I think if we could sum up working motherhood in one podcast, it would have been today. I probably should just post one unedited so people can see how real our lives are right now with, you know, four, four or five kids or and dogs and cats and everything running around in the background. That would um, be that would be perfect. So Amy, I want to turn it around on you now. You know, first time business owner and especially during the middle of a pandemic, what are some things that you have learned this past year, kind of launching your own business in, in the middle of not only in the middle of this mess, but with your daughter kind of as a side career? What are some things that you have learned? It's new and it's still growing. But like you, I, I really want this, you know, when you think business, you just think making money. And that was never the goal, honestly. It was reaching people, motivating, inspiring. So when I choose words to put into my jewelry, they're words that inspire me. 
Now we're starting to get more and more orders for customs. People know what they want in their pieces, which is fun too. That's fun for me to make, but it's been so fulfilling to connect with people, whether it's getting feedback from them after they get their piece and they say, oh, you don't, you have no idea what this means to me. Even the wrapping, we wrap our pieces in book pages and sometimes we wrap them in, I have a box of discarded hymnals and I know you made some great things from hymnal pages and they, so you know how beautiful they can be as decoration, but sometimes we wrap the jewelry in hymnal pages. Sometimes we wrap in novel pages We just, we have all kinds of books that we've collected. And sometimes people will say that they think there's more to it than coincidence that a particular hymn, that their piece was wrapped in a particular hymn because they have a strong connection to that hymn. There's something in in their background or it was a song that their mother sang or it was something that touched them in particular. And, you know, I had somebody reach out to me the other day and say, I think there's, I think there's more going on in what you're creating and sending to people than you realize because of how deeply mine touched me. And so that really, I thought if nothing else ever happens, that moment made all the difference in the world. If I'm connecting with people that way, or we're connecting with people that way, using words that just fills my heart. And so making money from it is is a benefit, but I'm also, it's also important that I teach Riley that we need to give back. And so we we were trying to do that as well. So 10% of every purchase made goes to a charitable organization we gave to the Cancer Center this last month. And so we're deciding, you know, where our next donation is going to go in the forthcoming year. You know, those are things that you don't typically think about. And I know, I know you do the same kinds of things and I know you get the, you make the same kinds of connections with people and you get that feedback that really motivates me to keep going. And knowing that not only we're, we're making a difference for people, but they're walking around and they're wearing something that we created. And that's continuing on a daily basis to give them joy or to give them peace or to give them inspiration or or hope. That's really meaningful to me. I've just learned that if you're not passionate about it, the stressful times would cause you to quit. My mom said, you should have never started, you know, don't, don't get stressed about it. This is supposed to be fun. And I said, I know, but Christmas really stressed me out because I didn't expect to get as many orders as I got, custom orders, and right up until the last week. And I really wanted people to have their stuff. And so it stressed me out to think that I wasn't going to make it in time or get it to them in time. And, you know, the mail, that last two weeks before Christmas, the postal service, everything was just bizarre. I mean, it really was crazy. And I did have a couple of people like, where's my, you know, where's my order? And I said, you know, I can't, I can't help what's happening with the postal service right now. And nobody can, they can't even help it. So those were the stressful times, but it never, it never caused me to reconsider what we're doing because I, we, we just love it. We love it so much. So I think enjoying it. And I think one of my goals for the forthcoming year is to tell more of our story with each piece that we make, because every piece has a story behind it. The river glass collection we launched this week, the Powell river. I I wrote a blog about how the Powell river factors into my childhood growing up. I was baptized there. My children were baptized there. The peace that you feel when you float on the river, when you fish, the water, you know, it's just, there's so much beauty in it. And that's what I'm, you know, we try to capture that with this collection. And so I want to incorporate more of our story into our work in the forthcoming year, because I think like you, it's important to tell that story. I mean, that's one of the ways that we connect with people. Yeah, absolutely. And and listening to your story, you know, you hit on the nail on the head on a couple of things. You talked about being passionate about it. You know, that's a really important lesson that you're teaching Riley too. teaching. And that's, that's something I think about with any of the work that I do at this point is I want to teach my kids, A, if you're passionate about something, go for it. I want to teach them how to be motivated and driven and how you can turn your passions into work. I think about whenever I very first started working and I was in college and I worked at a doctor's office at the reception desk and I used to hate driving to work. And, you know, it took me years to figure out what my passion was and and to put it into, you know, a paycheck. But I think that that's important to show our kids is that work can be fun. And especially if it's something that you're passionate about. And 
And I love, you know, just like I, I like to celebrate this area. One of the things I love that Amy does is, is she does celebrate where we're from. Um, and she has incorporated that in, a huge part of that into her business, which I think is just just incredible. So I'm I'm so excited to see where the year takes you guys and and me too, in, in terms of our professional careers and your business and kind of see what happens. You know, I will say I've been doing my Instagram blogging account now for a couple of years and every year there's twists and turns that I don't anticipate. And it's always kind of fun to look back and see where you started and how you got into where you are now. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward already to the, this podcast the very same time this next year and to hear where we both found ourselves along the way. So it was so fun to catch up. I was so, so fun to catch up. And I know Amy and I both have lots of plans for the podcast this year. We're so thankful that you're here with us and and so thankful that you make time to join us. I was talking to a listener the other day that said, I feel like I'm just sitting on the couch with you all. And that's what we want. We want this to be you sitting on the couch with us and and just chit-chatting and talking about life and things that encourage and inspire us. And we're, we're so looking forward to bringing more of that to you this year. And, and we've got some fun things planned and lined up for the year. I know Amy and I have both talked about how this is therapeutic for us and how we've missed it when we're not doing it. So we're going to hold ourselves accountable to, to doing this more this year. Right, Amy? Right, exactly. And because we are our own sponsors right now, we should probably tell our listeners where, if they want to know more, and we can also post this on our Facebook page, if they want to know more about what you're doing on social media or what I'm doing with my shop, let's tell them where to go. Where should people go, Brittany, to find more out about your business and your brand? Yeah, so uh, my blog is www.brittanyprobertson.com. And it's the same thing on Instagram, Brittany P. Robertson. Um, I also have a Facebook page as well. But those are the three primary things that I use to kind of share my content. What about you, Amy? So my Etsy shop is Ivy Attic. CO. The company is abbreviated on Etsy. But if you go to Ivy Attic Company on Instagram spelled out or Ivy Attic Company on Facebook, you'll see the link for the shop in my profile. We post new listings there and, and the stories behind the listings and you can just follow that directly to the shop. Right now, our stock is low because Christmas, you know, sort of wiped us out, which is a good thing, but we're making new stuff and posting new stuff daily. And so we just hope to see you there. And if my personal IG page is Amy Clark Spain. So looking forward to anyone who wants to visit and message us. And again, our podcast Instagram page is Southern Salon Podcast, as well as on Facebook. And I'm looking forward to talking with you again soon. Absolutely. We'll see you soon.